Hey there and welcome again to another video by The Thinking Pilot. I'm Dr. Amir Parekh and today we are going to talk about an artist's basic need, stationery. I'm sure we are all stationery holders and today I'm going to go in detail to explain to you exactly all the type of art supplies that I use for my works in detail. But before we start, see to that you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so that any notification and any reminder comes to you immediately. I've literally sorted out all my art supplies and it's going to be a little longer but I'm sure it's going to be a lot of learning, a lot of information that you all can actually utilize in order to get your art supplies correct. So we're going to talk about the watercolors, the papers, the pens, anything in detail, whether you're a beginner, you're an intermediate or a professional, these supplies will definitely help you. Let's get started. So let's begin with, of course, my favorite medium, that's the watercolors. As you guys can see, I have a pretty large collection of watercolors. I've tried a lot of brands, I've tried a lot of companies. I will tell you what works for me, what doesn't work for me, and you know, what you should look for when you're investing in a watercolor product. Now, how do you start with some budget-friendly watercolors? Selecting good watercolors is very, very important to your artwork. Otherwise, you know, it won't turn out as you want it. I'll tell you about the little properties that you should have. You should have one. It should be vibrant. It should have light fastedness if you're using, you know, colors that are meant to last long. They should be easy to handle and long term. Primarily, I started when I actually started, I actually started with the Camel watercolors. These are the most basic beginner friendly watercolors to start with. Uh, I also had a pan set. This is a newer version, but it's I had a Camel pan set also. So very good to start with. They are artist grade watercolors, which means that they are pretty decent to use. Then I had moved to Faber Castle watercolors and Faber Castle watercolors turned out to be very bright, very vibrant, almost fluorescent, you know, neon like. So I really loved using those as well. Eventually, of course, I have moved to, you know, using Brewstro professional colors, Thuvi colors, uh, the Botanica series from uh, Sonnet Nevesky. I mean, I started with tubes. I now mostly prefer to use pan. So if you see a lot of pan sets are there, even this is a pan set that I have. So I use a lot of pan sets primarily because it becomes easier to carry. If you're a beginner, these are perfectly good to go. Either the pan set or the tubes. What should you go for the pan or the water tube? That's basically the travel convenience, which is there with the pan is going to be much more easier at any stage of time as compared to a tube set because a tube you would have to load onto a mixing palette so it can waste the color but these will last much longer as compared to your pan set pan needs to be activated every time and can dry off these actually remain much longer plus you get a lot of shades you get much more shades as compared to a pan set usually and it's easier to mix this as compared to a pan set so you can find what works for you i have definitely started working with pans more if you're a beginner, this is definitely something you can go for. Also get this, it's, it's quite economical also, which is the Sonnet series. Don't mind the excessive usage, so you can understand how much I've used this. This is from Sitaram Stationaries I'd ordered, the Sonnet uh, Botanica series. These are pretty good to start with because it's got 12 different shades and uh, they are also quite vibrant. Uh, so if you're starting with watercolors, this is something that you can definitely think about investing in. If you're somebody who's a little more professional and you know wants to go to an intermediate level or to a more professional level, I had bought these. Uh, these are Brewstro watercolors. They come in this kind of a, you know pan set, uh, professional artist grade colors. These are really pigmented watercolors and excellent to use. I have used them in a lot of my artworks. Plus they are very friendly to carry. But this is more expensive. So if you're somebody who has a little budget constraint, this may be a little more. You can also invest in the Thuvi watercolor pan set. This is also something that is very, very beneficial considering the number of shades that they have. So this is the new pack. I have one which I have used. So you can get whatever you know works for you as well. Uh, they are going to be expensive. I am currently using this in most of my work because it's easier to carry and they pretty decent shades. You can also have these kind of tubes. Okay, these are the tubes from Thuvi. Pretty much similar in shade, but then of course the lim they're limited shades. So they will be more expensive as compared to a pan set. I also had a half pan set. So these are companies that you can definitely look at. Faber Castle colors, I would also recommend you should try. They're quite in budget, uh, but they are very fluorescent and vibrant to use. So these are all about my watercolors. Currently, I'm using this as my primary go-to colors. 
let's talk about the watercolor papers so you guys can clearly see i have like a huge collection of watercolor papers in fact there are much more they won't even fit in the screen when you're working with watercolor let's talk about that because that's what we are primarily looking at we need to have good quality paper so you need to have paper that is at least 200 to 300 gsm papers if you read anything can you read this gsm okay so that's what we need to kind of look at whenever we're working the minimum that you should have is 200 gsm if you're working with watercolors 300 is always uh, preferred there is additionally hot press versus cold press paper so if you see this paper it is written cold pressed okay if you see all of this puts it in cold press whereas here it's written a hot press so now i put up a video uh, where i have explained all the differences between a hot press versus a cold press paper go check that out and you get more information there whenever you're working with you know watercolor papers it's very essential that the water color paper must absorb sufficient water so for example let me just show you in this pad you know can you see how it's taken if enough water in fact it's even worked with gosh this is a line and what these are done in hot press papers i've again put them up let me show you some cold press work okay now this is a plan that i just did uh, recently so this is completely in ink and watercolor so you guys can see because the paper has a thick quality it's taken in a lot of water and that's very very important now what things you need to notice when you're looking at a paper is basically is the gsm that i just told you the thickness of the paper thicker the paper is better the size of the paper for example if you see i have some mini pads from bruce stroke and sin and uh, this is from anupam glaze uh, the skin one sorry so these are pretty good to carry around you know so when i want to do a small work it's very effective to kind of do that i done some watercolors here so these are very good pocket uh, friendly in the sense that they are easy to carry in fact it's quite expensive to have this so it depends on what is your budget you can invest on papers accordingly anupam are quite reasonable papers to invest in if that's a budget is an issue scholar papers are also good nowadays i'm using sitaram papers and they are also very budget friendly good to use i have a 220 gsm sitaram paper that i'm using i've done a lot of artworks you can go check in the instagram also i've done a lot of works on them i also have this 440 gsm rough paper so you can use what works for you i also have additionally some handmade papers so these are handmade papers by a local manufacturer and you know you can try those out as well so sometimes you know you may find even that works very well for you when you are looking at papers you can also look at how much cotton percentage is there for example if it's 100% cotton it will take in much more water okay this is just something that i made for a friend uh, the other paintings are of course put up brusto is a good company when i had it i started working with again they are a little more expensive in comparison uh, for ink and wash you can use 180 gsm 140 gsm also but uh, i would prefer that as much as possible try and choose at least 200 gsm additionally i prefer loose papers when i have an artwork that i is for commission order or something like that i prefer sketchbooks like this when i have i know i'm not going to give the artwork anywhere or it's going to remain with me or especially like a travel journal something like that then i prefer to keep these kind of pads with me so you can get the papers as per your need see which company works for you what budget is comfortable for you and then accordingly you can order your papers also have gouache acrylics uh, that i sometimes use i just showed you a gouache painting like i did here okay this is a gouache painting that i have done in fact the same one was also here so if you see that the painting because it was done in the workshop that i was teaching so if you notice okay can you notice the difference both of them are done with gouache okay i'm just showing you the the actual comparison both of them are done with gouache you can notice the texture here whereas here it looks very smooth right so what is your per personal preference you can accordingly get those as well but for gouache i use a thicker paper and accordingly you guys can order hope that helps you let's now talk about the brushes that i have been using so i actually have a lot of collection these are just some of the brushes so let me show you a little bit of the collection that i have so these brushes are from various companies these are from sitaram uh, this is a brush from taylor roni these are hemi brushes these are artisans brushes and these are camlin brushes so now these are primarily the brushes that i use i started with basic camlin brushes and they work perfectly fine now i ha only have the flats left from the camlin series and they are pretty good to go so since i'm using watercolors ideally a natural hair brush is better but i prefer to use synthetic brushes primarily because it's cruelty free so 
completely fine whatever you want to get is is up to you so these are the flat brushes that i have from camden these are very budget friendly you can use it for a variety of mediums one tip is whenever you're using the brush you should always check what it is for for example this is this brush is written a uh, brush for poster water acrylic so on any brand the brush quality and the indication of what medium is to be used for the brush will always be specified do not mix the two up always use the right uh brushes for the right medium do not mix your watercolor brushes with your acrylic brushes because they will you know not work in the same way maintain your brushes well if you need if we the brushes are not keeping well clean them regularly with warm water and soap it will be much more intact let them dry correctly so the next uh, brushes that i want to talk about are the artificial brushes so i started with a round set of artificials but that of course now i have discontinued after the silver bill brushes came in these are the set brushes that i feel are the go to brushes they are expensive but they are by far one of the best investments that i have done in my life if you want to get them the link to getting them will be there in the caption uh, these are the special texture brushes so if you are somebody who likes to get mint small textures you can get those as well now what do you look for in a brush uh, you have to look at how you are able to hold the brush okay you should have a firm grip when you are holding the brush how is the ferrule is it strong enough so that it doesn't break easily what is the bristle design okay so do you get a nice tip does it hold sufficient amount of water so whenever you're working with brushes see what works best for you a lot of people ask me what brush size to use i suggest you should try things out for example with the single brush from delatoni i have made so many florals in land landscape although it's a single brush it serves you know multi purpose utility i have these he brushes from hemi also these are used for my gouache purposes only gouache artworks i also have these sitanam special effects brushes so again for you know getting grass and you know getting some certain textures these kind of brushes work very very well now let's talk about these brushes which are the sitanam mop brushes artist mop brushes and these are also pretty budget friendly they're good to use they have a nice shape nice ferrule to hold and uh, i have been using all of these lately to create my floral artworks you can go check on my instagram on my youtube also they've been put up so these are very friendly you get a set of these four brushes like this you get a, you get this kind of a set so you can order that as well and they work perfectly fine too these are my set of brushes if you are a beginner start with camlin brushes they are pretty good to go if you are somebody who wants to invest go into sitaram or artisans brushes and that will really help you out Now let's talk about the pens that I use. As an ink and watercolor artist, I have to use these waterproof fine liners or technical pens. The two companies that I use are from Brewstro and Sakura. Both of them work really, really well. The advantage is, of course, you get a lot of sizes in them. You get packets in three, six, nine, so you can decide what nib size works for you. I also use this Sakura Jerry Roll white marker. I'm just putting it here since it's the pens. So for any white highlights on the watercolors, I use this. Now both of these are quite uh, in budget. Whatever works for you, you can use that. Both of them have main advantage that they are waterproof, they are fade proof. Uh, so you can use them after the watercolors or before the watercolors. Whatever works perfectly for you. I had purchased these over a period of years. So this is in fact lasted me for more than what two and a half, three years. So if you use them well, they will work sufficiently well for you. So the only care you should take is that you kind of. Uh, what I I keep messing up is I keep putting the wrong size. So just check the nib uh, number here and on the you know on the size here. So this will help you to keep an easy track. Uh, store it in a packet or store it in some place where it's not going to constantly get roughened. And that's how you can use these pens as well. So besides that, uh, ending with I also use sometimes these brush pens. I don't do a lot of calligraphy, but a lot of times I kind of use them with my watercolors because you can mix them with watercolors. I'm not really much of a calligraphy artist, but I of course prefer the Karen markers. They are world famous. They are really amazing. They have a huge collection. They are very water friendly, so you can use them as watercolors as well. I I have done a lot of artworks, in fact, with the Karen markers, which you can get from Sitaram Stationers. In case you need those, they are of course expensive, but if you're somebody who is a seasoned artist, this is something that is an investment to do. Otherwise, for basic brush pens, you can use the Camlin brush pens, the Dom's brush pens. These also work perfectly fine. So that was all about the art supplies that I use. I hope that was an intense <laughs> video. and if you actually watched the video i'm really glad because i know otherwise you would have just skipped it through 
uh, we'll end it here so that you all can actually go back see what you're going to get if you like the video you found it helpful please save share subscribe to the channel comment let us know what really helped you share it with your friends and i look forward to taking you on your art journey further dr amay parekh signing off